Time and Temperature, sponsored by Honda Dealers of the Carolinas. It's time for Clemson football. A quest for four on ABC News 4. Sponsored by WOW, Internet, TV, and Phone. Sports 4, Scott Iceberg and Darren Stolzfus. There it is, Bank of America Stadium, a couple hundred miles up the road. A live look counting you down to kickoff is Clemson's quest for history. A fourth straight ACC title, a fourth straight college football playoff berth. Plenty on the line tonight right here on ABC News 4. Good evening, I'm Scott Eisberg. Thanks for joining us as we get you set for the ACC championship game. The Clemson Tigers on the verge of accomplishing something no other team in ACC history has. Four straight football conference titles if they pull it off it's a fourth straight trip to the college football playoff something only Alabama has done Darren Stoltzfus has been in Charlotte with the Tigers since yesterday Darren how's it feeling up there besides wet tonight in uptown Charlotte yeah that's right, Scotty. Bank of America Stadium, a very soggy track here tonight for the Clemson Tigers and, of course, the Pitt Panthers. It's Clemson's fourth straight appearance in this game, the second time they've uh, played in this venue in a row because, of course, there was that year down in Orlando. But this is something this team is used to. Dabo Sweeney used the word routine to describe what it is like to come play for an ACC championship, play in this 14th week of the season in their 13th game of the season. On the other side, Pat Narduzzi and Pitt, they have never played for the ACC championship. So tonight, it will be two very different teams in one similar spot, a wet field, but in two very different directions. The same destination, the same path to the postseason, but boy, has this team gone through a different journey. Doesn't matter what you've done in the previous, you don't get to carry that over. Uh, it comes down to this game. It's not like baseball or basketball where it's a best of seven, best of five, and oh, well, we had a bad night, we'll play again tomorrow. No, it's a best of one. Uh, so you better be ready for this moment. All right, yes, sir. The score, all about four. Four straight championships, a berth in college football's final four. For this program, just one more game on the schedule. At the end of the day, you gotta play well. Uh, the same things that won those other 12 games will win this one. They're the, the, the benchmark of ACC football. Uh, I think there's a lot of great teams in the ACC. That's kind of what you work for. That's where we want to be. Um, and, you know, the only way you do that is go out and beat them. For Pitt, Pat Narduzzi, positioned to play for a title for the first time. The Panthers program making their first appearance in the ACC title game. You know, there, there's always nerves. If, if you don't have nerves, then I, you probably aren't ready. Uh, this is a special team because it's right now, and it's right here right now in Charlotte, and, and these kids have put the work in to get here. And, it, you know, not every kid can get that done. These kids have been persistent. Uh, they've been on a mission. We, we, you know, we broke down on ACC champs for a long time, and now we've got a chance to be there and do that um, against a great football team in Clemson. Two programs in very different positions, pit with more losses this season, than Clemson's seniors have in four years of wearing orange and purple. You know, when you have a lot of experience doing something, there is some confidence uh, that can come from that. But, um, you know, we, you, you still got to go do it. We still got a lot of guys on our team that this is their first experience. Uh, so, you know, I think that's no matter how much we've experienced things as coaches, you know, you always have new players that are that it's a first experience for them. So you kind of rely on the veteran guys to help you. Four, as in Clemson's favored by about four touchdowns in this game. More, that's what the Tiger faithful want. A chance to go 13-0 for just the second time in program history. They're going to do everything they can to win the game, and they certainly are capable of beating us. There's no question about it. Uh, and nothing matters. You don't carry over the touchdowns, you know? Uh, you don't carry over the sacks. You don't carry over the mistakes either. It's, a, it's all about this game. And in championship football, anything can happen. A chance 
to get in football's Final Four a chance in another national title. The honor, four quarters away. So as you can probably hear, the Clemson faithful are in the stands in droves. We expected this to pretty much be a Clemson home game. It doesn't appear that the rain will put a damper on it. There are plenty of empty seats, but we are still 38 minutes, 20 seconds from kickoff. Let's see behind me. Yeah, the Tigers are out there warming up. Wearing the white uniforms in this stadium for the first time, at least in a while. Trevor Lawrence last year wasn't even on this team. He will start a quarterback for Clemson tonight. Last year's MVP in this game, Kelly Bryant. Well, he left the Tigers after four games this season. A very interesting trek to Charlotte. Where can they go from here? That's the question. For now, live in Bank of America Stadium, let's send it back to you, Scotty. Thank you, Darren. There haven't been many storyers wilder than this season than that story Darren was just talking about. Trevor Lawrence starting the season as a backup quarterback. Quarterback, winding up the season where many thought he'd be as the ACC Rookie of the Year. Hard to imagine it was Kelly Bryant leading Clemson in his very game last year. It was Kelly Bryant leading this team early this season. But after Bryant's departure from Clemson after four games, it was Lawrence's team. And boy, has he stepped up in a big way. Most passing touchdowns ever for a true freshman at Clemson. 22. Most passing touchdowns by an ACC freshman. Most passing touchdowns by a freshman in all of F. BS football, and oh, by the way, he can do more than that. So I've said it all along. I mean, Trevor can run. You know, a lot of people don't give him credit for, for his athleticism, uh, but he can run, and, and, and that's what he does. And, and really, you see the benefit of his legs in the pocket and how he just extends plays, you know, how he the, the touchdown he threw to, uh, to T, just how he slid in the pocket, used his legs, and, man, threw a, threw a dart to, a, to T. So, so as he continues to, to, to grow and get more confident, then he's going to find, just like, like Deshaun did, you know, as he got uh, further in his career, okay, it's not, it's not open downfield, let's extend the play. All right, so let's take a quick look at the award winners for Clemson this year because it was a clean sweep. Lawrence, like we said, winning ACC Rookie of the Year. Travis Etienne winning ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Cleveland Farrell winning the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. And Dabo Sweeney wins the ACC Coach of the Year Award. And it is Etienne that wins the ACC Overall Player of the Year Award. Well deserved for the sophomore running back from Louisiana. He was outstanding. 20 touchdowns on the year for Etienne. Had a three-game run with three touchdowns in each game quickly reached 1,000 yards and you've got to realize by the end of the games he was out most of the time with games in hand he has got the wheels and the experience for the Tigers uh, most definitely I feel, I've been watching a lot of uh, Leonard Fournette Ezekiel Elliott uh, this year and I've been watching a lot of old Le'Veon Bell highlights just trying to like incorporate their game into mine some kind of way just uh, with Leonard, like trying to be physical like him, Ezekiel just being able to have that have that mindset of just running through anybody, and Le'Veon just the patience that he runs with, and things of that sort. All right, fans starting to gather for tonight's big game. Those fans likely with their iPhones out. They're anxious to see if Clemson wins. They could head back and start booking trips to Miami. They could head to Dallas. We'll find that out tomorrow. Angela Brown at the official Clemson Club watch party at the Charleston Sports Pub west of the Ashley River. Angela, how is it going over there? Can you hear the chant behind me? Fans here have been cheering, waiting for the big game. This is headquarters for Clemson fans. Take a look up here. The Clemson County, Clemson, the Charleston County Clemson Club, they've set up shop here, but lots of fans here waiting, counting down to the big game, including this table of fans I've been talking to all afternoon. Very excited. Now, a lot of these fans have a lot of good stories. Now, sir, you said you've been to every single Clemson game. Every single game this year, absolutely. Well, they're expecting Clemson to just to blow out Pittsburgh. What do you think? 30-point win in the rain. Right now, though, thank you so much. But right now, though, a lot of these Clemson fans, they're actually laser-focused on the TV screen. They're watching the Alabama-Georgia game that's now down to seconds and Alabama's leading. But what's going on here is more than just a good time, you know, rooting for Clemson. Take a look at this table right here. The Clemson Club is selling merchandise uh, that will go a long way to helping students at Clemson. So we're going to talk about that in a few seconds with Susan Campbell. Thank you so much for joining us now. We're with the Clemson Club. Now, tell me about the Tell me about what you're doing. How your club help 
help students by phone booking. Our club is a great networking place to be. I mean, we can network all over the place. We do also a lot of giving back. When we had the hurricanes, we had people bringing in canned goods, cleaning goods, diapers, baby stuff. We also give back to Halley Hill. That's another place we give back. So not only do we have, like, standing room only like we do tonight, we also give back. We also do scholarships as well. We have a scholarship raffle. Yes, we um, those that do get accepted to Clemson that may not be as fortunate enough to have maybe that extra money for books or stuff, we can at least, you know, help them with that kind of thing. Well, thank you so much, Susan, for talking thank to you. us. But obviously here, the countdown's on. Fans are waiting for the big game here. They're also, of course, paying attention to this Alabama game. But if they win tonight, Clemson, of course, excited about the possibility of a playoff. <laughs> Reporting live from the Charleston Sports Club, Angela Brown, back to you. Angela, thank you. Fans have every right to feel however they want. But some Clemson fans may have taken it a bit further last week after Clemson's rivalry win over the South Carolina Gamecocks. On a Sunday teleconference, Dabo Sweeney let it be known loud and clear he wasn't happy about that. And Dabo continued to do that whenever he was given a mic this week. Almost as synonymous with Dabo as his signature all-in, his other go-to... Win is a win. And, uh, and I've, I've just always felt that way, and I've always been passionate about that. Dabo, most always affable, thinks it's quite laughable when fans say a performance in a win is not passable. Our fans are amazing, 98%. Uh, you know, 98%. Uh, uh, there, there's always a, a small percentage in anything that are just completely out of touch with reality because our players you know they get stuff pushed at them in social media and I don't want our players to ever walk off a field ever with a win and and the so-called feel like a loss that, wow, how sad is that no by rule his players aren't tweeting but they are reading and this week we learn reading to others like mom I got to take away her Twitter. That's the first thing I need to do. <laughs> but, um, nah, I just read them out to her as a joke, thinking she think it's funny, and she definitely did not think it was funny. But um, it, it's no big deal. I always, um, I, if I see it, I'll always say thank you for the love and support. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get better from it. But uh, it doesn't affect me. I know, uh, like I said earlier, I know who I need to um, play for and I know what, why I play. So let's look at it realistically. Yeah, South Carolina's numbers staggering. Jake Bentley throwing for more than 500 yards, but Pittsburgh isn't set up like that at all. Schematically, quite the opposite. A run-first team, much like Boston College, a team Clemson's defense stymied. So Clemson motivated, but not by Twitter trolls. You can take cough syrup and get better from it, or you know, uh, and own it uh, and move on and get better, or you can sit around and make excuses. Uh, but that's not, that's not who we are. I mean, yeah, we had a, they had a, they had a rough night the other night, but, well, they've had a lot of great nights. Yeah, it's pretty easy not to let it affect you because, um, for me, I really don't even have to prove a point to my family, my coaches, and um, to the Lord above. Our worst defensive game of the year and won by 21 points, so. Uh, it's a team game. There's been a lot of games where uh, offensively we, we, couldn't, we couldn't hardly make first down and the defense gets stop, 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 stop. And, uh, you know, without that, you don't win those games. So it's a team game. And, and uh, at the end of the day, it's, that's what it's all about. It's all about winning. A win is a win to Dabo, and he'd certainly like that fourth win in Charlotte in the past four years. We'll be back much more after the break. And Tigers are on the hunt for the national championship. Join Sports 4 live from Charlotte as the Tigers battle the Panthers tonight at 7. Brought to you locally by WOW. Internet, TV, and phone. We're WOW. And we're for a football championship. Welcome back to Clemson Football, a quest for four on ABC News 4. Sponsored by WOW. Internet, TV, and phone. 
Welcome back. The biggest football story of the week, aside from this, of course, the wild coaching carousel we are dealing with, and it certainly has implications here in the Palmetto State. First, Buddy Pugh at SC State still don't know whether or not he will be back next year in Orangeburg. Buddy wants to, but says the school hasn't made a decision if they want him back, and both sides will have to make concessions. He was at last night's Somerville game recruiting for SC State, and former Citadel head coach Mike Houston was reported to have accepted the Charlotte job. Houston addressing the issue head on saying he was interested he had been offered the job but was concentrating on JMU's game against Colgate they lost today and then yesterday Charlotte announcing they were rescinding the offer from Houston because he wanted to explore other options the thought most likely East Carolina the ACC certainly has not been immune to turnover North Carolina firing Larry Fedora just two years after playing in his very game and Georgia Tech longtime head coach Paul Johnson retiring naturally Clemson assistant coaches are going to come up for nearly every search, especially in the Southeast, maybe it's a good problem to have. When Brent Venables goes nuts, he goes nuts. It's the craziest. That's why we kind of call him Vinny, because, you know, he is a little crazy on the field. I mean, he, he even on the practice field, he's got a like a, it's like this switch. Uh, he's one of the most intense, passionate people that I've been around. Uh, but off the field, he is... And I don't, it's kind of hard. It's, it's, I don't know what it's weird to say, but he's one of the sweetest spirits you'll ever be around. Maybe thoughtful and insightful, too. What you see, not what you get or what you hear, especially when it comes to jobs he may be in line for. My son Jake is here, and he's, he's chasing a dream. I sold this dream to him. You know, my, my responsibility as a, as a dad is to, is to support it for as long as he wants to chase his dreams. And, uh, you know, who am I to be a hypocrite? And uh, regardless of what opportunities are out there. No, that's one of the reasons he's so good. I mean, he's the best. Uh, he, he's the best. He just, it's an amazing, uh, it's been amazing to watch him uh, work, you know, week in and week out, year in and year out. There's nobody on this planet that's more detailed, more passionate, uh, or cares more about what he does and where he does it. Venables, unquestionably on radars of athletics directors from coast to coast. A defensive genius, a firecracker, a butt whipper, a motivator. The proof in the pudding, and that's some good pudding. But don't think it's there for the taking. I'm very thankful and appreciative and of what, what I have and very aware of what I have. And I've never tried to leverage one situation for another ever. I've never. I would never try to prostitute myself. I, if I, if if I'm worthy of something, then then then, you know, let the powers that be decide. Other side of the ball, same story. Jeff Scott, finalist for the Broyles Award, top assistant in the country. James Island high grad Tony Elliott won it last year. You name the list. Elliot on top of it these days, especially right down the road at Georgia Tech. Heck, he's already an engineer. I don't know, and I really haven't thought about it. And and, and you know, I kind of I kind of hate this time of year from the standpoint of man, I got an unbelievable group of, of seniors. I got an unbelievable group of running backs. We got an unbelievable group of guys on offense that have been extremely committed to this program. Um, they've been they've been unselfish. They've been loyal. They've been committed. And, and I don't want to be a distraction uh, in any sense uh, of the matter to those guys. At this point, these assistants just padding those resumes for the right job if and when it comes along. And we will be back right after this. Welcome back to Clemson Football, a quest for four on ABC News 4. Sponsored by WOW Internet TV and Phone. All right, welcome back. The playoff picture is starting to unfold right now. Alabama just came back from a big deficit. They win by a touchdown over Georgia. Alabama wins the SEC, likely the number one seed in the playoffs. Oklahoma won the Big 12 earlier over Texas. You'd think Oklahoma now might get in at four. Notre Dame in. They don't have to play in a conference championship game, and that just leaves this ACC title game. Darren Stoltzfus joins us now live 
from Charlotte again. And Darren, I guess it's all right out there for the taking for Clemson. Yes, yeah, Scotty, the talking is over. And if you can see, they've cleared the field now here at Bank of America Stadium. I've also been informed that umbrellas, no matter how small they are, are not permitted in this facility. So I'm a little wetter. It's okay. Clemson's about 17 minutes from kickoff here in a position they've been in before. And the playoff situation for them is pretty simple. If you win, you are in. Davos, he knows that. He said the goal, make this like a routine. Now, I don't think it's routine to play in an NFL stadium with all these blue seats and rain, but Clemson is a team that we have seen play in the rain and be happy about it before, so it shouldn't be too much of a difficult situation. The biggest question will be, they just played the song, Don't Stop Believing. Will Pitt believe? Will Pitt have the strength to come out and knock off the number two team in the country? We will see. They are a 27 and a half point underdog to Clemson tonight. So the Tigers, if they were to fall, it would be a monumental mental fall could spiral them out of the college football playoff. Scotty? Darren, one thing, of course, to remember, Clemson has never beaten Pittsburgh. 0 oh, 2 all time. Thanks for your work. Go enjoy the game. We will talk to you right afterwards about 11.30, maybe a little after that. Certainly stay dry tonight. For those of you watching the game right here on our air, we will have a full wrap-up. Darren will be live in Charlotte after the game. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to all of our photojournalists, and we'll see you after the ACC title game. If you're from South Carolina, you know that Gamecocks don't root for the Tigers.